Jean, Brexit is clearly a big consideration. How are you approaching this within your portfolio? Um, well, it might seem a little bit counterintuitive, um, and you know the um, tendency might be to avoid UK-facing companies um, and companies that are more dependent on the consumer, for example, in the UK for their profits. But actually, what we found to be a very um, good way to position ourselves post the Brexit vote was to actually buy some of those house builders which had been very weak. Um, to look at those retailers who were responding to um, online disruption um, and also to look at, say, restaurant companies, for example, which are using technology cleverly. Um, so that's where some of our investments can lie. We're very fortunate, though, in that our mid-cap index in the UK has 50% of its revenues generated outside the UK. Um, so we have a menu to choose from for uh, UK. Some companies completely UK focused, some with 90% or more of their revenues outside the UK. Um, so you know, I, I don't want to name certain uh, companies, um, but you know, there are there are areas where uh, we can look at in the UK domestic basket, which we feel are under uh, are oversold and which offer good value. Um, so that's how we will position ourselves in, in those companies that we know well, uh, where we think that there's demand for the product still, despite um, the fears that surround the domestic economy. Well, we're not going away here in the UK, are we? So some of us are still going to be out there shopping yeah. and going to restaurants. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's going to be the case in 2019 even.